love to get to on I love to get on I love to get to So I'm actually at my friend Derek's house If you remember him, he would be in the video that was called Vacation Nutrition a long time ago He had some back surgery, so coming over And we've been hanging out, we've been watching a We've watched in Silicon Valley, a show on HBO. Um, and his brother is actually hooking me up. Look at this holy grail right here. <laughs> this is the monster hookup. So he's hooking me up with some monster. I'm um, trading him some, uh, some Quest chips for some monster, so that's pretty good. And uh, we're gonna watch some show and I actually just ordered pizza. So I think I'm gonna take this case and I'm gonna try some yellows and maybe like an orange. So we ordered a pizza. Uh, just filming some, some random oh, oh, footage. Like yeah. So we got a sausage, pineapple, and I got it well done. I don't know if they actually did it well done. I think when you do this random directions, like, well done, they're like, yeah, I'm gonna make it the exact same way I always do. So, uh, I'm gonna eat this. Crush down one of these bad boys. Oh, what's your name? Visit us at microdrone.com to download. Oh, wow, microdrone. They just put... So guys, we are headed in to do some deadlifts, and I'm putting on my Chuck Taylors, and I definitely get asked a lot why, you know, why I uh, choose Chuck Taylors over any other shoe, and really, it's going to come down to personal preference. I've tried out a few other, well, I guess, i tried out a few different shoes, um, you know, that some may claim that are better than others, but I have found that with the deadlift, Chucks work just fine for me. There may be an option that is lighter. There may be an option that is thinner. There may be an option that is cheaper, you know? But I just found, I've stuck with my Chucks for a long time. They're kind of tried and trued. Tried and true, is that the expression? You know, there's a gym shoe that works and they are my favorite Delo shoe. And I also, I can be Mr. Rogers if I tie like this, boys and girls. Ha ha! But really, I love them. Um, and I'd recommend them. I think they're only like 40, 45 bucks. I know that they run really big. They're kind of like clown shoes. I, I get like a 10 or something in these. And like my Nikes are like 11. Yeah! Dang it. So we officially forgot to pick up the water bottle that had our BCAAs and our pre workout in there. And for a deadlift session, you're gonna want as much aid as you can, and you're gonna want a cool, refreshing beverage. So I gotta turn around and head back. I wear my sunglasses inside because I am too lazy. Come here, you devil log. Name that movie. Also, I've learned at this gym because there's uh, there's starting to be more and more people going around the time that I go. Um, I don't actually start drinking my pre-workout until I get in there and know that I'll have a rack or a barbell available to me, um, and then I'll start. So I usually, I'd say, let's say if I was getting up to like tonight, I probably get to like 500 pounds on deadlift. Um, I'll probably start drinking it around 135, but then I'll stop. I'll be done with my pre-workout by the time I hit my first set of 500. Just to give you an idea of when I drinky drink. But if it's like a Saturday and I know that no one's gonna be here, I'll probably drink it, start drinking it on the way over here. But lucky enough today, I came in and there's a bar waiting for me. So we are starting with 135. I was watching in the, uh, the Dom Zetti video about how to deadlift. He was saying that it's like no matter how strong you are, the deadlift starts, there, you always warm at 135. And it's, I guess not necessarily true, but it's pretty accurate. Even though, you know, when I can deadlift 400 pounds, if I can deadlift 600 pounds, I always uh, warm up 135. So I'll probably do two sets of this, and then I will probably start throwing on a plate. I don't start adding quarters until about three plates. I'll do 315, and then I'll do 365. And then from there, we'll go 405, 455, maybe something in between 500 and 500, uh, which would be a certain percent of my one rep max, and we'll probably do some singles today. So um, I'll try to give some tips throughout, but I might make a whole separate video just for that. So 
here's a little uh, tip, I guess. This is where I put my feet. Let me show you where I start, kind of a point of view. So this is what I'm looking at. The little neural bar right here is right in the uh, center of my foot. Okay, and you'll see the distance that I have between here because you want to have room so when you actually bend down and pick the bar up, then it comes in like close contact. If you put your shins too close, you'll hit the bar or your knees, your knees will start to travel over the bar. The whole point is to kind of stay centered. Kind of you want to sit back into the movement so you don't want to necessarily be like have your entire body weight over it because then you start uh, messing up your leverages. So, cool, tippy tip. Okay, headed into 315 now and probably the most asked questions on deadlifts is how much rest time do you take, Max? And I don't have an exact answer. I don't sit there and watch the clock. Um, I would say you take as much time as you need, but some people will say, well, you know, you want to do it in a certain amount of time, and I do agree, but I'm not taking too long of breaks to the point where it's going to affect my training, and I'm not going to pull the weight safely and effectively, and it's going to, um, you know, you have to do it in a certain amount of time period, or else you will not be prepared for it. Your body will kind of shock it because, you know, if you do 315, and then you come back and wait, do four or five for like 25 minutes, it might throw you off, so then you just kind of want to warm up again. So do it whatever is comfortable for you. Sometimes it may be... Uh, a minute or two if I'm still in the small warm up phase, but when I get up to you know the upper 400s, maybe 500s, if I'm warm up like 600 and one at max, I may take up to like five to seven minutes per set. So it's really gonna be dependent on what you want. And 315, I'll probably start doing sets of about three reps, and then I'll probably break it down to uh, doubles once I go above 315. This is what my hands look like right now. You can see the calluses that I used to have. Um, very, very slippery. Especially when you have like hair stuffed in. I'm constantly going like this and it gets the, the goo all over me. So right about 405 pounds is what I'm gonna start. Obviously put on my belt. And I'll still be doing doubles at 405 and now I'll be applying chalk to my hands. And you wanna do it pretty thoroughly. A lot of people just kinda of put their hand in the bucket and then just uh, you know rub hands on the chalk, which may seem like it's simpler than it is. We're really getting all the nooks and crevices and uh, some people may say you can over chalk your hands, some can under, under chalk, no matter what you do on the internet, you're gonna not appease some people. But try different methods of chalking and uh, see what works for you. But four or five, here we go. Sets. What I'm planning on doing today is going to be probably about uh, anywhere six to eight sets of singles. Um, and really what I'm doing is I'm starting my new programming soon and so this is just kind of uh, something that I want to do out. I'm trying to do some stuff in my head that I'll explain to you guys maybe in another video. Deadlifts, luckily, <laughs> uh, don't ex exert as much energy as they used to do. So 500 pounds uh, isn't as heavy as <laughs> it once was, although it's still very heavy. And like I, I said, finishing my pre-workout right at 500. film me showing you what I do between my sets is that's I watch the set to see how quickly it went up and to see if I made any mistakes and uh, it's really beneficial so if you can film yourself I recommend it because it's a lot in your gym because you can watch and it'll happen.
other thing that I recommend is a lot of people will judge their speed off the floor as to what their strength is for the day. And just because you, like these 500 pulls are not the fastest that I've ever pulled. I've pulled 500 a lot faster than this. So do not judge. Sometimes this, your speed will psych you out. You're like, oh my gosh, that pull is so slow. I'm not going to do the rest. It'll psych you out. You can't let it do that. Some days you're going to be faster than other others. And some days you might just legitimately pull the weight slower. But that does not necessarily mean that you're weaker that day, if that makes any sense. Or again, in my personal opinion, because we are on the internet here. Also, we're just going to do uh, six singles. I was going to do eight, but uh, due to time constraints, because I need to drive about 30 minutes after the gym to go pick something up at my friend's house, uh, we're just going to do set to six, and we'll, we'll move on to something else. Okay, so now we are moving on to the accessory movements. And what I'll be doing is some close grip underhand pull downs. The reason I'm doing underhand is because I want to focus more on the biceps because I'm going to follow these pull downs by some, bi by some bicep movements, maybe some alternating curls. And now normally on my accessory days, so usually like Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'll do a lot of normal rowing. And I don't do the biceps. I usually focus more on like compound accessories, if that kind of makes sense. But like on a day like deadlifts, I like to throw in biceps at the end, so I'll focus my the like one two rowing movements that I do around the bicep, and then I'll focus more like wide grip on my accessory days where I don't do biceps, if that makes sense. Also, something that's cool is my uh, my curling strength has actually gone up. I have been legitimately curling like fifties with pretty good form for like sets of six to eight. Um, usually not like not like three or four sets, maybe like the first set, and then I'll drop down to 45s. But uh, that's pretty good. I mean, back in the day, I used to do 50s, and it was like terrible form. Um, but I've always been able to you know, do like 40s and 45s, but hopefully my biceps are getting bigger, because they're definitely getting stronger. Yeah. Rocking the uh, Conquer shirt with Ape. There's talk about making some more of these with Ape, because a lot of people got angry that they uh, missed out on them. Um, it really, we really did them as like a test run to see if people would like the collaboration between the two. And they really did. So I know some people are going to upset if you know, we said it was a very limited edition. But, uh, you know, it's okay if more people get them, guys. It's okay. It's a really cool shirt. I like it. It's got the yeah, on the back, which you can't see, but yeah. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanted to take a quick uh, minute or so and just thank all of you because we are right on the cusp. We are right on the brink. We're so close to hitting 100,000 subscribers and I owe it all to y'all. There's a lot of people that have been here from the beginning when I have been completely different in the beginning of my YouTube channel. A lot of people may think that I've, like, you changed ever since you started the channel and you've gone a whole new direction. And I'm like, yes, I have. I, I have because I've grown up and I've realized what I wanted to be, what I wanted to kind of, you know, do with this YouTube thing and what I was in the beginning was not the same mindset that I have now so I'm very happy with where things are going it's very hard to please everyone on the internet but um, for all y'all that have been here with the beginning from all y'all that have been here for a couple months and for all y'all that has found me today this video thank you I know a lot of people do like 100,000 subscriber you know videos and I do have some cool stuff planned very soon which you'll come to uh, to find out but YouTube has definitely changed my life for the better um, the, one of the best things in my entire life I've ever done is, is started this YouTube thing. It's opened up a lot of doors for me, and it's uh, really changed my path in life. And I'm very thankful, and I'm very um, excited to, to see where you know, we can take this and what we can do together. Um, because without all of you, there's, <laughs> there's no me. So I do thank you guys. And um, to the next 100,000, we'll do it together. Ever forward, guys. So it may look disgusting, and, and a lot of y'all may have not tried putting dressing on your eyes, but it's really good. It goes together like a lamb and tuna fish. Would you prefer spaghetti meatball? If any of y'all ever wonder, like, some of the stuff I eat at night, uh, I eat a lot of these, and I know you pay more for them, but basically I dump these in, like, a bowl. <laughs> like a little, little, like, sheet. It's like, hello, I'm ready to eat me. <laughs> and then, uh, I'll eat these. I get these for, like, usually they're only, like, like a little over a dollar. So I paid a dollar for this at Walmart, and it's 16 grams of protein, half a gram of fat, four carb, sweet and spicy, which I have some lemon pepper as well, or lemon pepper ones. So I'll put that in there, so it's a good amount of carbs. Uh, I'll either one or two of these in, so it could be up to like 30 grams of protein, or a little more. And then depending on how much fat I have, like I've always said before, I have different versions of dressings so I'll squirt on. So this is like 
one gram of fat per serving. So if I don't need that much fat, I'll use this. If I need a whole lot of fat, I'll use something that has a whole lot of fat in it, such as this Italian, which has 12 grams. So basically what I'll do is whatever I have fat I've left, I'll make this, this, and then I just squirt this on there, mix it all together, and it's delicious.